Okay, so terms and conditions page. So this is where you actually set up your terms and conditions. The more languages you set up, the more options you end up with having here. So right now, just English is really set up from a translation point of view. So you've got your English translation here, and you'll notice that in terms and conditions, you can have a different terms and conditions for a distributor as you do for customer. So your terms and conditions are very important because as people sign up, they're agreeing to them, and they're all version tracked. So once you put a terms and conditions in here, if you come in and edit even one word in it, it'll actually force every member on their next login to agree to the new version of terms and conditions. Okay, so it always tracks it. So if a guy ever does try to come after you, you actually have the ability in the system to see exactly what version of your terms and conditions he had agreed to. The way our system works is when you first go to sign up on the very first page, it takes your terms and conditions and it puts them in a box that you agree to with the checkbox underneath it. So yes, you can just have that box be a link to the terms and conditions, but we understand that it's better legally to actually have the big, long, ugly document stuffed in that box. Now, most people don't read it anyways, but having it in that box apparently is a little bit better than having it a link to somewhere else. So if, and again, the system doesn't care. If you just put a, you know, terms and conditions, the link is here, then that will show up in the box versus you putting your full list in there, which is, it's a scrolling box, right? So you can have a 10 page document. They're only gonna see the first three paragraphs anyways, and then they can scroll through it. Okay, and we don't go, we don't go really mean, you know, some of the ones that, that you have to scroll through it actually have a checkbox within the scroll through area that has to be checked. We don't do that. You just have to check the box. So our system operation is such that if you change them, the next time they log in, they're forced to agree to them. So you just want to make sure whatever wording you're using says, yes, you're agreeing to use them, you're agreeing to them, and every time they change, you know, you will be you will see them to re-agree to them. So we're done that one. We can close that window and we'll go look at website style option. This, this is just a place where you can take some standard styles to start working with. But it's just a place where you can sort of pick horizontal menus versus left-hand menus and then you can go in and you can populate your graphics. So it's, it's a place that gives you actually a lot of control over the look and feel of the website yourself. Okay, let's look at block usernames. Okay, so block usernames is a place where you can put any word on this list that you don't want someone to be able to sign up with. Okay, so a lot of the real crass swear words are actually on the list, but we don't display them because our, our um, Bible Belt uh, clients get really upset just seeing a swear word on the screen, like it's our software is terrible because we have a heinous word. So we put a couple for flavor, uh, and all of the real ugly ones are, are hidden. But the purpose of this area you might want to look at things like country names and province names. It's not the end of the world, but you don't want a guy sort of pretending like he has some kind of master rights to Alberta. But I, I point it out to you because, again, this is one of those areas where it takes me two seconds to describe what it's for, and it can take you guys four hours to sit around a table and decide what to do with it. Because there, you know, anything related to your industry, your company, your company names, all of that stuff should be excluded for use. Like your, your domain name should definitely be excluded for use. So whatever domain name you ultimately use should be put on here as a, as a block username. And you can't block something that's already done. If you suddenly found a guy with a username that you don't like, you'd go ahead and you'd change it. And then you'd go block it. Right? So you'd go and say, hang on, we don't want that guy using that. You'd contact him to say, hey, we've changed your username to such and such. If you want something different, let us know. But we don't allow the username you picked, so we've changed it and then you'd put it on the blocked username so no one else could then sign up again with it. Okay, close that window. And we're just racing right along. We'll go back up to the left-hand menu, menu web editor. Um, let's click the plus button beside admin, please. And then let's click edit beside sign up, just for fun. Okay, so the thing I wanna show you here is notice right at the top it says user tie senior support. So what this is telling you is this is saying this particular link is only visible for senior support or higher. So let's say you said, well, hang on, we want a junior support guy to be able to do signups. Then you'd come in here and you'd set this from senior support down to junior support. And this link would now be available from junior support and higher. So every link you see in admin you can change the level of access required for somebody to see it. Okay, 
So the system is actually very, very, very dynamic. But you have to know uh, that it's dynamic to change it. So it comes out of the box in a standard configuration that works for most people, but you do actually have the ability to change around the menu structures, to change around the level of support required to see each and every link. Point out one more thing on that. Click on the uh, admin. At the top, you've got the breadcrumbs that say, you know, web section or web editor section admin. Click on that admin link, the blue link. So now you should see quote editor, you know, do not delete quote editor translate home in the list. Okay. So let's click edit beside translate. And notice language says not, not appropriate, or not acceptable, or not available. Sorry. So if you click on the edit beside translate, you'll notice when you go in there, there's no box for you to edit this page. And that's because this is a system page, which means you can't edit it through the web editor. From distributor configuration. Let's go look at country code because that's kind of important. So under configuration, click country code. So on country code, if you take a look, the most important column here is sort order. If you set something sort order to zero, this means it will not display throughout our system, same rule. So if you want to not be open in Afghanistan, all you do is set the sort order to zero, and when the person goes to join, Afghanistan will no longer sign up on the list of countries they can pick one. This is where you can scale back if you do have certain countries that for some reason you don't want to be promoting in, you can turn them off here.